kids, welcome once again to the Mask Fan Attic. I'm Dr. Lady and you're here with me in the attic above the glamorous and scenic horror hotel in Chatfield, Ohio, where we look for cool old masks for all you Halloween enthusiasts out there. And uh, well, I believe it was the, the poet Keats who once said, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And Keats never made it over to my house, and it's a good thing, too, because I don't know what he would have made of things like this. This particular guy here is Gash. Appropriately named Gash. That's, that's like Gosh, only with an A. Or, or like Cash, like Johnny Gash, but this isn't Johnny Gash, this is just Gash. Now, Gash, a creation from the late 80s, from our mid, mid to late 80s, from the long gone and much greatly missed um, American Mask and Novelty. And you know that because right here it says American Mask and Novelty, if you can see that. Well, even if you can't see that, that's what it says. Now, Gash was created by uh, a guy who uh, should be familiar to all mask collectors and mask enthusiasts, Ray Hykus. And the reason I keep looking down there is because you wouldn't believe where I'm standing. I'm, I'm, I'm at risk of serious, uh, grievous bodily harm here if I, if I fall. Um, you wouldn't believe this. Um, how dangerous it is doing these segments. Just for you, just to tell you these things. Like I said, grievous bodily harm I'm risking here to tell you about old Halloween masks. And if you saw Star Wars, you know how mean grievous could be. Um, he's, he's never been the same since they canceled Grievous and Butthead. You know, but... Boy, this has spiraled way out of control, hasn't it? Where was I? Oh, yes, Gash! That was it, I remember now. Gash here, created by Ray Hykus, sold in the late 80s when slashed boogie faces were all the rage. In fact, uh, for a while there in the late 80s, uh, Distortions and Post and all the big mask companies were obsessed with slashed boogie faces. And, uh, gosh, Distortions for a couple of years there, if you didn't want a slashed boogie face, you were out of luck because they almost uh, didn't make anything but, but various slashed boogie faces. Gash, I think, one of the better slashed boogie faces. And this one, um, well, again, a, a, a testament to how great the quality of uh, Ray's stuff from this period uh, was, because this is that old and it still looks this good. Or bad. Or, well, you know what I mean. And if you see white in there, I should, maybe I should take the paper out. See, it's just stuffed with, uh, it's stuffed with paper uh, shopping bags here from a, uh, from a supermarket. Let me just take those out and give you a better there see there's there it's it's just uh, just stuffed with paper and you can do that in the privacy of your own home stuff your gash with paper uh, gray hair silvery gray looks pretty realistic I like the blood and uh, again not a big fan of slash boogie faces for the most part but this one's just really dramatic he can be used as uh, the head of a victim you could stuff it with paper again pick those back up and stuff them back in it toss it on the ground in your haunted house scene or your yard haunt or whatever and it looks like a uh, monster or a werewolf or, or somebody has just done something extremely unkind to one of their victims. You could just use it as a victim's head or in the torture chamber or whatever. Or you can wear it as a uh, living dead type, as a zombie, you know, if you're into The Walking Dead and that kind of thing. Now, um, not a lot of uh, fascinating history on Ogesh. Uh, Ray, who sculpted it, says he's not really a big fan of uh, bloody gore masks as much as monsters, but... This was kind of a sellout on Ray's part because at the time this is what the public wanted was gory slashed up faces. And uh, well, like I said, heck of a good one, I think. Uh, the best the best thing uh, I can tell you about old Gash here, other than that you should look for one because it's a cool mask, is that uh, this, the blood, you see that? Take a good look at that blood. Now, the paint that was used for the blood on this and the other uh, bloody masks that uh, American Mask and Novelty was putting out. The blood was made with a red powder to tint it. Um, obviously, you have to tint the paint with something, right? Uh, done with the red powder, which got spilled all over the floor of the workshop while this guy was being, uh, while these masks were being painted. And uh, not this exact one, this line, this round of masks uh, being painted. And so, I guess for like years, literally years after that, every time the floor would get mopped, uh, the mop water would turn red and look like blood because they just couldn't get all that powder out of the floor and then eventually pinker and pinker and pinker and lighter and finally it went from looking like blood to looking like pink lemonade I guess but uh, 
Gaish here thinks that's pretty funny. <laughs> See, he thinks that's hilarious that there was blood all over the place in the workshop that spawned his evil soul. So, um, that's your Mask Fan Attic pick for this week. The old bloody Gash from American Mask and Novelty. Good night and good heavens. <laughs>